down. Thank you very much. Very warm moment. What's your name? Mike. Your name, your name is Mike Lamoy. From Hamilton. From Hamilton. Apparently, Mike has a very, very important question to ask. Good morning. Good morning. Mike. Here. All right, go ahead. This young lady. Right here. In 1998, I'd like to ask you to marry me, Cheryl. There's oh, the answer. Yes. The answer was yes. December 31st, 1997. 29-year-old Cheryl Shepard is celebrating New Year's Eve with her boyfriend of two years, Michael Lavoie. On live TV, Michael surprises Cheryl with a proposal, and with a smile, Cheryl accepts. The seemingly happy, now engaged couple share a kiss and Cheryl shows her ring and they continue to celebrate the evening together. Two days later, Cheryl would vanish. Cheryl Marie Shepard was born to mother Odette Fisher and her steelworker father in Hamilton, Ontario on September 29, 1978. She was raised in the city and was one of two daughters. On Thursday, January 1st, 1998, Odette, who was in New Brunswick visiting family, spoke to Cheryl around noon on the phone discussing the plans for Cheryl to pick her up on Sunday, January 4th from the train station in Toronto. Odette would never see or hear from her daughter again. When Odette reached Union Station after a long journey, she waited for Cheryl, but Cheryl never arrived. Worried that something may have happened, Maybe Cheryl had gotten a flat tire. Odette would eventually have to find her own way home, and when she arrived to the apartment, she shared with her daughter Cheryl. She wasn't there. Friend Michael, who had lived with them at the time, would come home around 10 p.m. that same night and would tell Odette he hadn't seen Cheryl since the Friday before, which would have been January 2nd. While in the apartment, Odette would hear the news of the proposal for the first time from Michael and that he had dropped Cheryl off at a club in Niagara Falls for a dancing job she had been hired for. Odette didn't understand this as even though Cheryl had danced in the past, Cheryl told her mother that she would never do it again and hadn't done so in a year. Also, Cheryl was already working a full-time job at the time. Odette would describe Michael as agitated while she questioned him and thought it strange that he would have Cheryl's car keys. Odette would finally decide to call the police and the police would tell her to wait overnight before reporting Cheryl as missing. The next day, she would phone the police again. They advised her to come into the station and file the missing person report. Odette would go back home to discover Michael had moved most of his belongings from the shared apartment. Police would spend 10 days investigating inside the 7th floor Queenston apartment where Cheryl's contacts and glasses, which she needed, were found inside the apartment, along with her purse and ID. A substance was found in spots in an area of the apartment, but it wasn't determined if it was blood, but police stated it was definitely suspicious. During the ongoing investigation, police would hear that Michael would more often than not be sitting in the dining area of the donut shop where Cheryl worked and watch her during her eight-hour shifts. If he thought she was giving too much attention to someone, he'd loudly clear his throat. He was very possessive of her and went out in public together. His actions would make it clear to anyone that he was with her. A friend would report to the police that shortly after the proposal, Cheryl would tell her she was going to cancel the engagement, but was afraid of his reaction and that it would be violent. Family and friends would also report being surprised at the news of Cheryl accepting the proposal. Some reports say that Michael was spotted by the superintendent at the apartment building removing two large garbage bags. Also, a neighbor who had witnessed Michael grab Cheryl's neck at a different time would also state he saw the garbage bags being carried out by Michael. The neighbor would state he asked Michael about Cheryl as he hadn't seen her in a while. Michael would tell him that she was sick in bed and that he was taking the bags to the laundromat. Earlier in the day, on January 2nd, Michael and Cheryl would be seen at the bingo hall that was across from the apartment complex. It was also reported that they were spotted together by a friend between 12 and 2 p.m. at a gas station. 
Michael would say he was in a rush and just dropped Cheryl off in Niagara Falls around 6.45 p.m. in the alleyway beside the club she was allegedly hired to dance at. He would then pick up his daughters between 7 and 7.30 p.m. in Chippewa, but instead of taking them back to his shared apartment, he would drop them off at his mother's and leave them there for the night around 8.30 p.m. before picking them up again the next day. It is not clear what he did that night after leaving his children. He would return them to their mother earlier than normal on January the 4th. Michael would claim Brian, Cheryl's ex-husband, was going to pick her up in Niagara Falls, and this would be one of two stories that Michael would tell in regards to who was picking Cheryl up. The manager of the establishment on Lundy's Lane denies the claim that Cheryl was there to work that weekend, and he had never heard of her before the police questioned him. In the early morning of January 7th, an unconscious Michael would be found in Cheryl's parked car inside a closed storage locker with the car running. Michael had agreed to meet with the police the day before but did not follow through. Michael was pulled from the car close to death. He would survive this attempt and recover. We can only wonder, was it guilt or sadness that led him to try to leave this world? He wouldn't be the first person to report his fiancée missing, even though he claimed he hadn't seen or heard from her since he allegedly dropped her off in Niagara Falls. He also declined to take part in searches, interviews, and would make no public pleas to find Cheryl. It has been almost 24 years since Cheryl vanished, and she has not been seen or heard from since. Michael has never been arrested in connection with his fiancée's disappearance. Her mother Odette still holds out hope that she will have answers before her time in this world comes to an end. Cheryl's mother would say, I'm 70 years old. While I'm alive, I just want to know. I want an answer. I want to find her remains. I need to put her to rest. It's painful not knowing what happened to her. At the time of her disappearance, Cheryl Marie Shepard was 5'4", had wavy blonde hair, blue eyes, she weighed approximately 105 pounds, and had a heart tattoo on one of her ankles. She was last seen in Hamilton, Ontario. Anyone with information can contact Crime Stoppers at 905-522-TIPS. There is a $50,000 reward for information on Cheryl's whereabouts, that of her remains or information leading to the arrest of her attacker.